Hello, here you can see 1.5 kilowatt continuous steel. It's just on the table, uh, doesn't switch on. Today I'm gonna tell you how to use this steel, how to connect everything in case to make it working from the very beginning, step by step. So the first step is to connect the water supply. Here's a water distributor that supplies water into the steam generator and into the column uh, heat exchanger. So first step is water. So here our water distributor. We've got a plastic hose and here we're connecting connecting to the water supply. It could be just tap water, it could be just a portable water cooler like this one. So first thing is the water. Water from here going to here. Second thing is water outlet. So there's a water out getting through this plastic hose. It can go to the drain and in our case it's just looped around through the cooler. We reuse the water. Uh, water switched on and it started to fill up our water distributor and steam generator at the same time. Here you can see plastic transport control pipe. Here you can see the water level. It should rise to the certain point and st uh, stop. So once water there, you know that your heating element is submerged and it's not, a, not gonna, gonna be burnt or blown or something like that. So first thing is the water. Our next step is to provide collection or disposal of, of the waste that's gonna come out of this nozzle at the bottom of the column. So in our case it's just a bucket. We're gonna use this bucket. In your case it could be drain, just directly to the drain. You can use the bucket, you can collect it, reuse it, whatever. So it's still possible to reuse it for next batch or if you would like to, but actually in most cases people just throw it away. The next step is mesh supply. Uh, our fermented liquid ferment is supplied through this valve, ball valve. So this ball valve actually controls the flow, sp uh, speed of the flow of the liquid through the column into the column. So we are supplying our mesh into this nozzle. Through the hose, rubber hose or plastic hose, it goes through this pump from the fermenter. Fermenter doesn't need to be on a table, it could be in a separate room, whatever, just uh, everything depends on the, on the pump. The more powerful the pump, the further it could be, you know, in a separate room, doesn't matter. In our case, we just made all the arrange arrangements on the table, everything next to each other, just for convenience, to show you how it works. Is a whole setup. Is a pump. Is a bucket. Our next step is just open the mesh or ferment supply. It just fills up the pump as much as possible. Then we switch on the pump. Now we open our tap. Mesh is going through the uh, plastic hose. And now to make it easier for the mesh to go through, we just need to open this valve on a column. So here you can see everything is filled up. There's no resistance now. Our next step we just switching on the pump and let it pump through the column to fill the column up. The, hi, the, here you can see that that the mesh actually filled up the column. It's all complete. Now we just close our tap. I just forget to mention, uh, we just switched on the pump. 
Now it's working. The column is filled up on this side of the column is an indicator so it indicates how the column is filled up currently it's full it's full the tap is closed there is no supply of mesh into the column but pump is still switched on this is a centrifugal centrifugal pump it doesn't care about extra pressure there is no extra pressure no pressure build up it builds up the pressure as soon as you open up the tap, as soon as there is some, some way to escape for the pressure. Anyway, our next step is actually switching on the steam generator. Before we switch on our column, we have to think about some vessel where we're going to collect all our spirits. So we've got our vessel, this is a reservoir that we're going to use for spirit collection. Spirit is going to go through this metal tube, it's actually attached to the bottom, bottom nozzle of the heat exchanger. In this construction, as you can see, there is no plastic parts that actually get into contact with the spirit. Everything made out of food grade stainless steel. The only plastic used for water and mesh supply. But they are at room temperature, they are cold. Uh, there is no contact of the mesh inside the steel and heating element. We use water as a medium and uh, water steam as a medium, as heating medium, as actually transfers the heat into the mesh and force it to release the spirits okay our next step is switching on we've got our steel switched on into the power is the steam generator it's bottom of the steam generator and, and it's gonna take about five minutes not one hour not two hours but five minutes for the spirit to start forming in a steel so the first drops are indicator that is that our column our steel is hot enough to proceed as you remember our mesh supply well is still closed and it's not open until the column gains the temperature so once it gains the temperature the level in this indi indicating tube plastic tube gonna fall down and as soon as it reaches probably this point it would be the time to open up the control valve this one another indication once you adjusted your column the edge of the heat heat zone should be on the bottom third of the column of the heat exchanger sorry so everything from the seam this seam down there is hot everything below is cold so as cold as actual temperature of the mesh and it's supposed to remain this way during whole distillation now we started to get some spirit coming out level had dropped has dropped and this is time to start to adjust the mesh supply so this column the, this heat exchanger gets extremely hot actually it's very hot and we open it up the well very slowly as you can see our column is adjusted that works perfectly stable Is a steady stream of spirit. As I mentioned, there is no contact with plastic, but some would say, okay, there is no contact with plastic, but you collect into the plastic vessel just for this particular event. Usually, I use uh, glassware or something or stainless steel, but 
in this case doesn't really matter plus this spirit already cooled down it's not hot it's not boiling as it would be in a column anyway the column works perfectly stable I didn't touch it for, for a while since the last time we've been talking here's the water supply as you can see the level of the water where it's supposed to be it's our mesh almost half of mesh is gone is our waste quite long Actually, it's so long to reach the drain but just for this purpose to show I made a bucket so technically this is it Thus you can carry on your distillation, it takes only 5 minutes to start if everything is ready, if it's somewhere stationary, 5 minutes to start, perfect, if you've got 1 hour to distill, just use this 1 hour, 2, 3, 5, 10, no problems, and the actual size of the fermenter or whatever amount of mesh that this column is capable of to process it doesn't matter as well small column it could be 10 liters 5 liters 20 liters 200 liters this is very convenient and yet it's very small mobile light Thus, once you finish your distillation, all you need to do is just switch it off. Switch off all the power first, then switch off the pump with mesh, switch off the water to maintain, replace the vessel with uh, mesh with the vessel with the fresh water and pump the water with the same pace as you're pumping the mesh, but there's no need to switch the steel on, just with the switched off steel. It will rinse all the steel inside. So this is it.